name is John Byrne, and I welcome you to this special presentation of Senior Station, brought to you by the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. Senior Station is a program for seniors of all ages and abilities to enjoy movement and storytelling. We start here in our train station and we go all over the world. As I share stories with you, I welcome you to follow my movements. Well, here she is, the Cornwall Express. Today we are traveling to the magnificent country of Bolivia. We will climb the Andes Mountains, visit a giant salt flat, and take a look at the most terrifying highway on Earth. As you get settled in your seat aboard the Cornwall Express, let's just take a moment to relax. We can start with a warm up. Go ahead and breathe in slowly. And exhale. And breathe in slowly. And exhale. Now try it with your eyes closed. Breathe in and let your whole lungs fill with air. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Go ahead and lift your shoulders up and drop them. Lift your shoulders up again and drop them. Go ahead and open your hands and let's do small circles, just warming up our wrists. That's right, very gentle and we can go the other way. Bring your hands in front of you and slowly close and open your hands. Continuing to breathe and fill oxygen aerating your body. And just relax with your hands open. Start to bring your pinky finger in and roll your fingers in and out. Sort of like wrapping around the door handle. That's right, just articulating each finger. And let your hands shake. And drop your hands. Slowly rolling up our chest and our shoulders and our back shoulder circles. And reverse. Gently bring your hands to your shoulders. Try the same thing with your elbows. Elbow circles. Just dropping your chin down to your sternum and let the head be heavy. Don't push this, but try the other way. Let your head just hang off of your spine. Continuing to breathe. And your head is up neutral. And let your head drop to your shoulder on your own time and very gentle, side to side. And that takes us into some small head rolls, very gentle. Feel the sun on your sternum, relax. Speaking of that sun, just touch your chest and open up your sternum 
and reverse that, make a curve on your back. Curving, open and close. Warming up the back. And find your center. We're just going to make slow circles around our center. And go the other way. made in Bolivia, closing and opening our arms. And arms are side, they go up and down, and up and down. And let one arm just gently curve over. And neutral, try the other side. Next stop, La Paz. We arrive here in the old La Paz railway station. We must read slow because La Paz has the highest elevation out of any city in the world at 12,000 feet above sea level. It's not easy to breathe here. Take slow, deep breaths. It's gonna take a minute to get used to this high elevation. Bolivia is a landlocked country that borders Paraguay, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. It has a very diverse population and hosts 40 different languages. The weather can be wet and wild, and there is a large range of landscapes, from mountains to lakes, deserts, salt flats, and even glaciers. I think since we're feeling that altitude sickness, we better head over to the witch's market and look for some coca tea. We arrive at the witch's market. We come across a woman dressed in a hat and a traditional dress, and she is surrounded by coca teas. Follow me. We sit and we stir the magic potion. Arms going round. And make this movement as big as possible. The coca tea is brewed, and then it will help us with our altitude sickness. Oh, I think it's ready. Take some in a cup and put it in your thermos. Try it. Mm. Feeling much better already. Close your thermos and go ahead and put it on your back. We are ready. We next set out to climb a mountain just 30 miles north of La Paz. The traffic can be very bad here, even when we start early in the morning. We have to get to the mountain before 8 a.m. because when the sun comes up, there's a greater chance of an avalanche. Join us on the bus. We're heading up to the big mountain. We're in the bus and it's rocking side to side and sometimes it's bumpy. We're heading to Huena Potosi. Hold on. And the bus calms down. It's winding up the mountain. Follow my movement. The bus sways side to side. And we can lean side to side. And we can look out the windows. Hola. Hola. Try it with me. Hola. Hola. As we get higher in the mountain, it's harder to breathe. We breathe slowly together. And out. And in and out. We see llamas 
can we make two llamas just like this? And their heads go round and curvy. And maybe they look at each other and look away. They're so cute. And we see alpacas. Try it. Your head is going front and back. Bolivians have great respect for the earth and they celebrate Mother Earth. Arms are round and we make the Mother Earth dance. We arrive in Huayna Potosi. This is a giant mountain reaching almost 20,000 feet above sea level. The face of the mountain is a glacier, so we will get ready. Put on your sunscreen. Don't forget top of your ears and your shoulders and arms. And put your thermal gear on. And put your boots on and tie them up. And put your sunglasses on. And we're going to wear crampons. Put your crampons on. Crampons stick to the ice because we will be climbing on ice. We also need an ice axe and it goes in the ice and helps pull us up. We can make the rock climbing dance like this. It goes step, step, kick, step, step, kick, step, step, kick, step, step, kick. Try it a little faster. Step, 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 kick. Step, step, kick. Step, step, kick. Well, we arrive on the summit of Juana Potosi. We look out over the beautiful, amazing Andes mountain range, and we take one big sigh of relief. <sighs> Check out the view. And now we quickly climb down before an avalanche comes. Quickly climb down the mountain. And we get on the bus and we jiggle all the way back to the capital city of La Paz. When we arrive back in La Paz, we head to a cafeteria to have a traditional Bolivian snack. Today, we're going to try the saltena. A saltena is similar to an empanada. A saltena is a baked pastry, and usually it's filled with beef, pork, chicken, or vegetables. Today, I'd like to try the vegetarian saltena with cheese and spinach. The flavor inside is delicious because the protein is usually mixed with olives, and raisins and potatoes, and you can dip it in a garlic sauce or a sauce of your choice. Go ahead and try the saltena. Mmm, delicious. And since we've got more ahead of us today, let's go ahead and have a cafe con leche. Cafe con leche is hot coffee with hot milk. Or you could try it black or negro. Take the coffee the way you'd like it, and sip. Mmm, delicioso. Did you have one azuka or two? One sugar or two? That was just the wake up that we needed. Now we head northwest to the Peruvian border. We are heading to Lake Titicaca. It is believed that the Incan civilization was born here. This is a giant freshwater lake in the basin of the Andes. Ships and boats are used here for transportation. Make a long sail and rock side to side. Or maybe you're a large ship and you're rocking side to side this way.
There are many islands at Lake Titicaca, and some of them are man-made. Make an island and let it float around the lake. On these man-made islands live communities of indigenous people. They're very skilled and they build houses and boats out of reeds. Take your hands and open your fingers. Weave your fingers together. Now it's time for a joke. <laughs> I met a man from Bolivia. I said, so you're telling me that you're from the fifth largest nation in South America? I don't Bolivia. <laughs> he said, you don't believe me? I can prove it. <laughs> Bolivia is home to the world's most dangerous road. This road connects the capital city of La Paz to the villages in the Yungas region and the Amazon. In the north, it is known as Camino de la Muerte, or Death Road. The proper term is Yungas Road. Today, we will take a bus on our journey to this road, which is about 50 miles long. The bus rocks side to side. Uh-oh, don't look, close your eyes. On this narrow road, we trust that our driver will not take us off a cliff which has a 2,000 foot drop. The bus shakes and we snake around the edge of the mountain. We see cascades curving down the rocks on the mountain. Be the water cascading. And take your two hands and put them together. The road is very, very narrow be the road wrapping around. That's right. This road was built by Paraguayan prisoners during the Chapo War in the 1930s. They had to dig into the mountainside. Dig with me. Maybe try the other side. pick up rocks and move them. And South America is very well known for their love of soccer. They call football. So maybe they would kick or push the rocks with their legs. Try that with me. Kick, kick, and stretch. That's right. As we rock on that bus going around Death Road, we see a mudslide forming ahead and the driver drives faster. And we put our hands up and we scream. <sighs> we made it to the end, an alternative route to the Yungas was completed in 2006, but before that, an average of 300 people died on the road yearly, and that is very sad. We finally make it back, safely into La Paz. We take a deep breath, and we give thanks that we made it back safely. And now we're ready to head southwest to a union. In the uni, we arrive at a train cemetery here in southwest Bolivia. We definitely want to protect the Cornwall Express, so we won't stop, but we just pass by slowly. The wheels of our train slowly turn on that track. 
The Union has long been a transportation hub connecting many cities in South America. Weave your fingers together. That's right, connecting all of those cities in Peru and Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and of course, Bolivia. In the early 1800s, plans were made to build an even larger network of trains out of the Uni, but the project was abandoned because of a series of technical difficulties and tension with the local indigenous people. The trains have mostly been scrapped for metals, but what remains is constantly being battered by the wind and salty air. The trains sit and decompose. As we keep going on our train, we look out the window. Wow, I see something standing on one leg. It looks like this on its sides, and it stands on one leg. Try it. Or maybe you can cross a leg. That's right, you look like the flamingo. We see a colony of flamingos. Who knew that a uni was a major breeding location for the flamingo? Now we arrive at the salt flats probably the most famous destination in Bolivia. Be very flat. And your hands are flat. And they stretch outside. And make your body very straight. That's right, the salt flats are very flat and very straight. Take one hand and paint the horizon. The salt flat is about 3,900 square miles and it is the largest salt flat in the world. The Ayuni salt flat is a surreal sight. I don't know about you, but I am not a big fan of salt, so I'm just going to go ahead and look at the salt flat, but not get near it. I don't want to get my hands or my skin too dry. We stop at the Iuni Salt Flat Hotel. This is a chalet entirely made of salt. Now I'll be careful not to touch anything because again, I don't like the way that salt feels on my skin. <clears throat> Inside, we sit and we have a moko chinchi. A moko chinchi is made from orange juices, whole peaches, raisins, cinnamon, water, lemon zest, and sugar. It is boiled and simmers overnight. Served cold for a refreshing escape. Try it. Delicious. The moko chinchin is a very popular drink in Bolivia. As we open the door and walk back out onto the salt flat, we feel a drop of water touch our nose and then shoulder. Touch your other shoulder. The water taps our ears and our knees. It's starting to rain. Now something magical is about to happen. As it begins to rain, a shallow pool of water forms, and suddenly the Ayuni salt flat becomes a beautiful reflection of the sky. It becomes the world's largest mirror. Would you like to follow me today in a special game called Mirror? The Mirror game works just like this. Just as I'm following myself, we can follow each other. Now we can try the Mirror game together. Just pretend that I'm your reflection and mirror me.
that last bit was just a joke. But I think you can see the game is called Mirror because we're following each other just like a mirror. And you can do this on your own with your friends, just sitting right across and playing the mirror game. And you may want to take turns being the leader and then being the follower and going back and forth. And that is the mirror game. That brings our trip to Bolivia to an end. Go ahead and climb aboard the Cornwall Express and find your seat which is waiting for you. Again, my name is John Byrne and it has been a pleasure to explore with you again today. I give special thanks to the Alzheimer's Foundation of America for presenting this special program. We will see you soon. Adios and gracias.